Hi, my name is Dr. Michael Ross, and over the next few minutes, we're going to talk about basic biomechanics of the human body and the cause of the majority of back pain in most people. First of all, let's look at a very basic system. We have a fulcrum, we have the lever arm, and we have whatever force or mass exerted on the end of that lever arm. From this, we can see that the amount of force or torque on this fulcrum is equal to the length of the lever arm times whatever mass is force is put on the end of that lever arm. Basically, if I have five pounds in my hand and my arm is three feet long, that results in 15 units of force being exerted on the shoulder or the fulcrum in this particular instance. So, this fulcrum needs to be the most stable, most durable, strongest point of the entire system. If it isn't, and we apply that load of that lever arm with whatever force is being exerted upon it, if the fulcrum is not the most stable and durable, it will fail under that load. And the reason why I use the word durable is because it's not just a strength issue. It's not just one force being put on there that will cause it to fail. Many times it's the repetitive load, numerous leverings against that fulcrum that this fulcrum needs to be able to support. Pretty straightforward. And in order of importance, we can see that it's the fulcrum, then the lever arm, and then you can do whatever function you want with that system. It's very similar to the human body. We are four lever arms around a fulcrum. And in the human body, it's not just one point that all of this, these forces are being exerted upon. It's the shoulders, the hips, and the spine creates this functional fulcrum group, as I like to call it. And we know that in the human body, whether you're walking, you're running, you're jumping, the amount of force exerted on the end of that lever arm is three to seven times your body weight. So each step of that run, jump, or walking, that force is being exerted up this lever arm into this functional fulcrum group. So from this, we can see that this area needs to be the most stable and the most durable in order to withstand that amount of levering. And again, like that system, it needs to be durable because we don't just take one step or one jump or, or one walking. We do numerous repetitions, so it needs to be durable enough and stared, stable enough as well as sturdy enough to support that entire system levering against it. And just like in this system, the most important piece is this fulcrum first, then the lever arm, and then whatever function or sport or activity you want to do with the system. And it's a relative balance between the durability of the fulcrum and the amount of force that you're putting upon it. A 150 pound person does not need as much stability and durability of their fulcrum as a 250 pound person because it's relative to their body weight. The problem arises, and this is where pain or injury occurs, is when these two are out of balance. In the majority of cases, I see people putting the lever arm first, and they're doing a lot more work on their lever arms versus their fulcrum. This imbalance overpowers the fulcrum. So now the lever arms are overpowering the fulcrum, and the fulcrum is failing. In the human body, that translates to pain and or injury. In addition, for years, the dogma has said that a flexible spine is a healthy spine. But in this system, you can see that if the spine or the functional fulcrum group is flexible, like a noodle, a cooked noodle, it will fail under the load. It actually needs to be very, very stable and very, very durable 
more like a golf club so that you can put weight on it and snap back repetitively. That's why flexible spine causes injury because then this is not durable enough to withstand the levering of the lever arms on it. So emphasis on building the fulcrum durability first and then training the lever arms and then you can do whatever function or sport you want to.